Why would an environment perfectly crafted for its hosts result in all of them dying? Let's analyze the rise and fall of mouse utopia. In 1968, Dr. John Calhoun conducted an experiment with mice called Universe 25. The first eight mice, four males and four females, were introduced to the environment and life was pretty good. So good, in fact, that reproduction began with the population doubling every 55 days until it reached just over 600. And then, slowly, things began to change. The population still increased, but at a slower rate. But that wasn't the only thing that seemed to be wrong. Even with increases in the amount of food and water and maintenance of Universe 25, keeping up with the increased population, the behaviors of the mice began to alter. Communication within the community started to break down. Some of the male mice, intimidated by the presence of rivals, gave up on social interaction and attempts to breed. Some of them even retreated into the upper confines of the environment where they did nothing except eat, drink, and groom themselves. But at the same time that these preening mice, which became known as the beautiful ones to researchers, isolated themselves from the group, others were engaging in much more antisocial activities. Violence, aberrant sexual behavior, and even cannibalism started to take place. Females lost their interest in caring for their young, and males lost interest in reproduction. It got so bad that by day 560, the population reached its peak at 2,200 mice, and then it began to plummet. The last mouse conceived in Mouse Utopia was on day 920. The final mouse died four years and 10 months after the experiment began. But why? I mean, again, it's not as if they were running out of food or water or that they were subjected to diseases or predators. So if it wasn't famine, sickness, predators, natural disasters, or even potentially overpopulation, what happened? I mean, what explains this? And does Universe 25 hold any relevance for human interactions and societal decay today? We are nowhere near peak human capacity on Earth. In fact, as the population has exploded over the last 200 years, going from 1 billion in 1800 to over 8 billion today, prosperity, access to food, clean water has only increased and increased exponentially. And yet, when we look at the stats for today, live births are now declining at such a rate that we will probably see peak population numbers within our lifetime and live long enough to see countries like China, South Korea, and most of Europe rapidly decrease within the next 70 years. In addition to birth rates, the increases we see in mental health issues, confusion over sexual identity, and increasingly antisocial behavior is rising at the highest levels ever recorded. Could it also be that as abundance has flourished, so has a kind of decadence? Do we as a people lose a sense of purpose and meaning when we no longer believe in certain grand narratives that keep us together? Perhaps all of those struggles and challenges and dangers in life, ranging from feeding ourselves to overcoming obstacles, actually drives us to develop not only capabilities, but community. It's through these struggles that the bonds of friendship, marriage, and family are forged in a way that provides meaning that cannot be replaced by mind-numbing entertainment, drugs, and alcohol. Now, does this mean that tragedy is somehow a necessary component of the human experience? I mean, I hope not. And I certainly don't think we should manufacture a crisis in order to kickstart social cohesion. But I do think that one great advantage we might have as people is that if we are in fact created in the image of God, then perhaps that equips us with a sense of identity and purpose, offering challenges and hope and the ability to change course in a way that the little occupants of Universe 25 never could. Do you have a why you would like us to answer? Go into the link in the description and pose your question and maybe the next why minutes will be dedicated to you.